Hello, and welcome to Notes of Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 50, X Pages, Improving Type Ahead. Is there a doctor in a house? Why, yes. Yes, there is. Okay, before we get into the show, uh, just a couple uh, Notes of Nine kind of housekeeping things. I haven't done one of these in a while. And I wanted to get a couple updates out there for anyone who cares. Um, so first of all, this is my 50th regular show. Uh, and now, what is a regular show? Historically, it's 10 minutes or less. That's where the whole Notes of Nine thing came from. Actually, it came from uh, YouTube, which had, which had a 10-minute limit uh, back in 2009, which is which is kind of gone uh, nowadays. But what when when that limit left and and I could do longer shows, I started doing these extended edition shows, of which I did 12 of those. Uh, the longest show being 72 minutes for my X Pages jump start, and and all told together, I, I actually calculated it uh, this weekend. Um, there's been over 12.6 hours of free X Pages training uh, for myself and and my fantastic contributors. Uh, that's available on X Pages TV and and Notes9.com and stuff like that. So, uh, why am I telling you this? Um, well, what I what I want to do is is I'm going to fold the extended editions into the normal show numbering scheme. Um, so all that really means is the next show that I do will be number 63, uh, because I wanted to, since I don't really have a time limit anymore, I just wanted to kind of like clean these things up and try to make it easier, and I'm, I'm working on some website redesigns and stuff like that, so I don't want to keep it, I don't want to keep separating the extended editions out in their own world, so I'm just going to, uh, basically call, you know, those 12, you know, f you know, from 51 to 62, and then the next show that I do, uh, will be, uh, just number 63, and, uh, really you probably don't care about that anyway so let's get into the meat of the show and why we're here and we've got a new contributor today and boy am i excited because he's actually a doctor um so today we welcome uh dr mark roden in and uh, his website is zomino.com i believe it's pronounced which is www.xomino.com and i don't have much on the on this slide here uh for the introduction because he kind of takes care of that himself. He's doing some slides w with his demo or so. But I will tell you, I actually met uh, 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 Mark at Lotusphere. He sat behind me in a Declan source control session, uh, which was, uh, you know, that's just a great session with two overflow rooms. And I was in the front row, and Mark was right behind me in the second row. And he didn't kick me, you know, during the show, um, during the session. So that, that's he's a good guy in my book just for that. So anyway... Uh, Mark's going to come on and he's going to talk about uh, the type ahead, and and this is really interesting because uh, we all know how to do type ahead, but w we're going to get two great things from this show. One is we're going to see how to improve the type ahead um, with with a, a graphical display that that tells the user whether it's working or not, which is just awesome. But Mark also goes into uh, kind of like a deep dive into Firebug, and and tells you how this type ahead works. Um, behind the scenes and, and what it looks like or so, which I, I just found that uh, to be fascinating. So Mark is a great uh, client JavaScript guy and stuff like that. So he's going to go through that and kind of just show you the innards of, of what XPages is actually doing behind the scenes. So so it, it's definitely uh, something that you do not want to miss. And with that being said, let's go to the demo. Hi. My name is Mark Roden, and I'm going to be talking to you today about adding a visual indicator to the X Pages type ahead. I have been a primarily web based Lotus Notes Domino developer now for 14 years since our version 4.5. And my blog, where you can find more information about this and other X Pages related things, is www.zomino.com. Today I will be doing a demonstration of creating a basic type ahead within an X page and then we are going to take a look at how that works through the web page, breaking it down, the HTML, the JavaScript and what is involved in creating that capability through the web page. We will look at uh, Dojo selectors, uh, how we use Dojo to actually select elements within the document model or the DOM within the web page itself we're going to modify these events to show the visual indicator which is the whole purpose of this and demonstrate the final effect so before we get into the how what are we trying to achieve today so let me just do a quick example 
here we have a normal type ahead. We type a letter, we get a drop down, we get lots of different options, we can move up and down, and, and we pick one. But if we type something, we have no indication whether this has worked, we don't know whether it's going to stay, we don't know what's going on. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a type ahead with a little bit of feedback for the user. So when we type something, you'll see over here we have a little icon, and when we pick it, it goes away. So let me run that one for you again. Do you see that? There's your indicator, and there's our selection. And if we type and it doesn't find anything, eventually it's going to stop, and it's indicating to the user it didn't find anything. So that's what we're going to achieve today, and this is how we're going to do it. So, without further ado, let's create a type ahead. Today's database that we are going to be using has got one view, it's very simple, and we are just going to be looking at the first column, which shows a list of travel locators. If you go on vacation, you'll get a code from a travel agent. This is a list of them alphabetically ordered in the first column. That's all we're going to look at today. So we are just going to copy this and we will go to the database. So within the database we are going to create a new X page. And within that X page we are going to create a basic panel to contain our text box. And we're going to add our editable box. We're going to call this Travel Locator. And down here, we're going to click on Type Ahead. We're going to enable the Type Ahead. We're going to take off Case Sensitivity, because I always forget that, and it always messes me up. And under Suggestions, we are going to add a basic server-side JavaScript lookup. Just like your app formula, we have a DB column to this database in the VW Travel view, which is the view that I showed you earlier. And that's basically it. We are going to save this and we will see what it looks like in the browser. So here we go. We start to type and we see a t the, the results from our type ahead. Very simple. It's very functional. I'm do using the up and down keys over here. Um, and if I select one, that's what we get. That's how the type ahead works in X pages. It's brilliant. I mean, literally in 30 seconds, I have created a fairly advanced piece of functionality. It's fantastic. So, uh, we're looking at this in Firefox. And one of the nice things about Firefox is we have uh, some web developer plugins that we can plug into the browser that makes our lives a lot simpler. Excuse me for jumping around. So we are going to use Firebug today, which is uh, allows me to uh, manipulate the document model in real time. So not only can we see how things are built, we can actually make changes on the fly and see what they would look like if we were going to program this further down the line. And we're going to use HTTP Fox, which is a very nice uh, just tracker of the HTTP traffic that's going in and out of the browser. So we can actually see what's being passed backwards and forwards between the server and the browser. Okay, so how many elements does it take to create this input box? Well, you would think it would be fairly simple, but actually it's a lot more complicated than you think. So we are going to open Firebug, and we are going to select this particular field, and we're going to take a look at it. So this field was the travel locator field. So there we go. We can see our travel locator field. And at the top here, you can see in the browser that the, uh, the field is now highlighted in blue. That's our input field. But that input field is contained within a div. There's another div up here, which apparently has got all sorts of other things in it. Uh, another div and, and another div. So we've actually got multiple divs. We've got two input fields, and they're actually all superimposed on top of each other to give us this visual effect. So taking a look um, at this particular div over here, um, over here on the right-hand side, we can actually see 
um, the styles that are, are given to this particular div. And if we scroll down here, we can see that there's actually a background image on that. Well, actually, if you look at this, the nice little shadow that they put on the on the top, that's a background image for the uh, for the div. So there's a nice little uh, visual indicator over there. But if we scroll down here, we can actually see that right now this field is hidden. The display none in the style sheet means that we can't see it right now. Hmm. So this input field that's actually inside that div is also not visible, even though it is due to the cascading style um, and of the style sheet. It's actually hidden because it's within the uh, the parent element. That particular field also has a background on it. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so what we're going to do is we are actually just going to change this style here and we're just going to change display none to display block and you will see this looks suspiciously like a combo box. Yes, uh, the type ahead capability is basically derived from uh, combo box functionality and you can actually see within here if you look at the code that we have combo box capabilities. Um, we're not going to use it like a combo box, but we are. So it's kind of clever. Um, down here we have this validation container. And uh, if we look at this, we will say this is also not displayed. Within there we have this field. And within that field, that also has a background image. So why don't we change this and why don't we make these visible. So let's go over here. I'm going to add a new attribute for style. And I'm going to just say display block. And there we go. Look, we, are, we can now see this warning image over here that is actually coming from this field. Is now displayed over here. And this x value. Let's get rid of that x value, it's in the way. Now we can see here's our type ahead field, and it will still function as a type ahead field, but now it looks very different. So now you can start to see how this simple piece of functionality is built up of lots of different parts. If you've ever used um, any of the digit widgets to do a date validation or something like that, or general field validation, you may have seen this warning icon appear before it's always there. So we basically have a field with something else on the end and something else on the end to give the impression of one field but there's actually multiple pieces of functionality that are going into this. So what are we going to do? Well we want to create a visual indicator so we really don't want this combo box on the end and I like the fact that we've got that warning image in there. We're, we're going to use that and you'll see that coming up soon. So, uh, under the covers, as, uh, as I've shown you, we basically, there are lots of things going on in this particular field. So what actually makes this happen? Well, we have an on key press event. So when you actually type in the field, it actually triggers a post back to the server, which I'll show you in a minute, to actually retrieve the results of the lookup that we want. When you click on the field, when you click on the, uh, sorry, on the results that are returned, that triggers the on change event of the field and updates the field and puts in the selected choice that we have. The on blur event of the field also indicates if we have actually clicked away or we have tabbed away from the input field. So let me show you that using uh, HTTP Firefox over here. So when, as soon as we start um, to type, you will see right there that this post was sent to the server. And you can actually see down here the data that was sent to the server. Um, but the important thing to look at is this is the information that is returned. So let me do this again so you can see both of them. So you can see the MAKL, LLB, MDM. So basically this drop down is built from an unordered list that is returned 
by the server as soon as we start typing. When we click in here, that triggers the on change event. Or if we do this and we just tab out, nothing happens, that triggers the on blur event. Okay? So, um, we are going to change the on key press event. I want to add a visual indicator to this field. So, we've already seen where there is an image already on the page. So, when the user pushes the button or the keyboard, I want to put a visual indicator and make it visible to the user where we saw the warning sign. And then once we've done that, I actually want to get rid of it. So on the on change and in the on blur event, we are going to remove that image and take it away again. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we, get, we have to get a handle programmatically on the document model on the divs and the inputs um, that contain the warning and apparently that X that we saw before and we're going to do that by using dojo.query um, if you look at this reference you will see uh, all sorts of interesting information about dojo.query but what it basically allows you to do is systematically select any element within the document model based on a query so we called our field travel locator one. Selecting travel locator one, that doesn't work. Well, that's because in X pages, even though we called the field travel locator one, that is not the name of the field in the web page. Let me show you that. So just to show you again back over here, our field is called travel locator one. But you may have seen before when we actually looked at this in um, Firebug, our field uh, is actually called, let's bring it back over down here, it's actually called view colon underscore id one underscore travel locator. And the reason the X page does that is because you may have, may have uh, multiple pieces of data coming in from multiple different places and it actually creates and uh, keeps a handle on a dynamic field name so it can make sure that there is no overlap of any of the names of the elements within the web page. You'll also notice that the other divs and what have you that were created over here uh, are kind of related. So this one's actually called widget underscore the view ID travel locator and over here we actually have a pop-up for the travel locator and these all go, I'm not going to go into the details of them, but they all go towards making the functionality so within the web page itself what we want to be concerned about is this digit validation container which was hidden and this digit validation icon these are not these are not names these are classes what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how we can select something based on its class within the document model so travel locator is not going to work for us okay well maybe if we changed it and as you can see here here's the the field that was created uh, so maybe if we changed it to dojo.query view id travel locator one maybe that would work well Unfortunately, that's not going to work, and the reason is because within um, the CSS3 standard, the colon is actually used as a reference point for selecting elements, which are otherwise known as nodes, within the document model itself. So the colon is a special character. So by just querying it with a colon, it's the dojo is not going to find this. So what we have to do is we have to escape the colons with a backslash in front of them. So what I've created, and you can find more information about this on my blog, is I've created this x dollar function that basically takes an input of the name of the, the, the ID tag of the field that we're looking for, it replaces a colon with a backslash, and it also adds a parameter if we need to add something onto the selector, and then it returns uh, either a string or a jQuery function but for today we're just going to talk about dojo so we're going to use the x dollar function to turn the name of the field 
into something that we can actually select in the document model. So here's an example. If we actually pass in view ID one travel locator one, we will actually get back view backslash and the backslash. And when we use that in the dojo.query, that will find what we're looking for. So how do we get view underscore ID colon this, that, and the other? Well, in server-side JavaScript, when we reference the field name, travel locator one, um, we, if we reference it using this hashtag, it is automatically converted into the actual dynamically assigned name of the um, field in the web page. So that we don't need to know what this is. We can always use something that we do know and that's all we need to worry about. So, okay. Now we're going to do a demonstration of how we're going to change this. Um, I have a type ahead demo JavaScript library that is in the database and it contains the X dollar function that we've previously discussed, an add visual function, which is what we're going to use to add the visual indicator, the remove visual function, which we're going to remove the visual indicator, and a check timer function. And I'll come to the check timer function in a minute. So what we need to do is we need to add the JavaScript library as a resource to our X page. So let me just show you. Here's the library. So we have the X pages function. We have the add visual function. So what the add visual function is going to do, it's going to define a new image which is going to be my tree expanding loading dot gif it just happens to be something that's already installed on your X page why use another image when there's already one on the server so we are going to query the document model and we are going to get the widget and the ID tag so that's the widget view one ID one travel locator one and then we are going to get within that widget we are going to get this dot digit validation icon. The dot indicates a class name. So let me pull Firebug back up so we can see them together just, just here. So within the widget, so there here is our widget travel locator. Within there we're going to select all the elements that match D with a class name of digit validation icon. Well, that would be that one. Now, this digit validation icon is generic. If I had five type of head fields, there would be five input boxes with a digit validation icon. But in this case, because we are including the ID of the div that is the container of that particular input field, that's how we can make sure that we only get the one that we're looking for. So then what we're going to do is once we've got our image, we've got the um, particular element that we want to affect, we are going to change the background image style to be our image. So we're going to basically force our image on top of that container. We're going to make it visible. And if you remember, the widget uh, was actually had a style of display none. So we're going to make that vis visible and if you remember there was an X in the field we're going to get rid of that. So we are going to get the image figure out where to put the image and make the image visible. When it comes to removing it we are going to basically get the same field again we're going to take off the background image and we're going to hide it and make the widget display none. So the check timer, um, what we're going to do in the in the key press is we're going to set a timer for five seconds and after five seconds it is going to hide the visual indicator. And the re part of the reason we do that, and I'll show you when we get to the web page, is if somebody types something in that doesn't return anything there is also no indication to the user that they've typed something wrong or there is nothing coming back. 
So by removing the image again, we're actually indicating to them that yeah, something's going wrong here. And I think five seconds is long enough. If it's taken far more than five seconds to return your results, then you have a bigger problem. So back in my X page, and I always forget to do this first, I am actually going to add, so over here in the outline I've selected X page, and I'm going to add a resource to my X page, the JavaScript library of the type ahead demo. So that adds all of those JavaScript functions to my page. Brilliant. I am then going to take this code and I'm going to stick it in the on key press event of the field. Okay, so we've got the field in the events tab, the on key press. Now we have client or server. We don't want this to happen in the server, we want this to all happen in the web page. So I'm going to pick client just go into the script editor and do a simple paste this is going to do an add visual so it's going to call that JavaScript function it is going to pass the name of the travel locator and I don't really call care what it's called and then we're going to set a timeout of 5000 milliseconds 5 seconds to the check timer the set timeout runs in a separate thread in the browser so everything else can go on perfectly normally until that five seconds is up and then we're going to trigger that hiding of the image again. So that's in the on key press and once we've got it when we make our selection or when we blur, apparently I can't type, out of the field we're going to remove that visual again. So in the on change and on blur event so in the on change again in the client and in the on blur, again in the client, we're going to remove that indicator. And I am going to save this. So let's go back to our web page and let's see what that's done. Now, when I type M, I get a visual indicator over here that something is going on. And as soon as I click, oh, you can see that disappear. Look at that. If I actually leave that there for five seconds and I keep talking, it disappears. Well, that's okay. The user's already got it in this particular case. Let me do that a bit quicker. And I make a choice. And it goes away. Now, if I actually typed in a whole load of rubbish, I'm going to get nothing back from the server. The indicator goes away and uh, there might be a problem. I would suggest that you give the users some examples of what you expect them to type so that they have some level of expectation of you know don't type in a number for example because you're not going to get anything and that's basically it that's basically my demonstration we've added a visual indicator and it's gone very simple very simple indeed so In conclusion, basically the type ahead is a much more complex capability than uh, would immediately appear on the surface. And well done to IBM actually for, for simplifying something that is uh, really quite complicated and they've made, given us a capability that would have taken us hours worth of work in Domino before. So well done. Um, I've given you a basic uh, example of how to select elements using Dojo within the web page. Using X$ dollar to get around the fact that we have colons for names and uh, ultimately we added our visual indicator to the web page itself. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. There, there will be uh, a blog post um, accompanying this uh, video going out. Uh, please feel free to add comments. Um, I would love to hear from everybody, get any feedback, any suggestions for any improvements. There are always a better way of doing this. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Mark Roden. And that's the demo, and I thank Mark for his time, and I look forward to having him come back on the show uh, whenever he wants. And if you have any questions for me, uh, here's my contact information, and I thank you for your time.